we have people from UK, most of you are from Ireland. I'm from Italy, so pardon my accent. <laughs> I am uh, Luca. I am associated to a couple of research centers here in, uh, in Ireland, the Applied Intelligence Research Center, uh, the ADAPT Center, the intersection of uh, the, the main four universities here in Ireland, TUD, DCU, UCD, and uh, Trinity College. And uh, I'm associated, I'm working as an academic uh, at the newly established uh, Technological University Dublin. So, here. So my first things I want to um, explain is what artificial intelligence er really is. There, are, there is a lot of confusion among people and, and non-experts. And a lot of people think uh, machine learning is equivalent to artificial intelligence. But machine learning is just, as you can see in this picture, a subfield of artificial intelligence that deals with the creation of models that represent the reality that we observe and we gather through data in an inductive way. So from data, we build model. And deep learning, which is a very big buzzword nowadays, is just a subfield of machine learning, which is a subfield of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is something bigger than that. We have natural language processing, so we, we do um, we, we, we mainly play with text, textual information, either gathered uh, through, through audio signals or, or, or pieces of text. We have perception and planning, which is another subfield of artificial intelligence. Knowledge representation, how we represent knowledge, how we represent data. And we have automated reasoning. So all these is artificial intelligence. So when you hear someone saying, Ah, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Machine learning is just a small part of artificial intelligence. Indeed, today is the most developed field of artificial intelligence, but this is not equivalent to artificial intelligence. And probably most of the people get confused between artificial intelligence and computer science. Most of the answers or most of the tools that you are going to play with in your organization comes from computer science. And then we have a whole layer there at the bottom, which is data science. So a data scientist is a person who indeed plays with data, but might not know anything about artificial intelligence. A data scientist might not know anything about computer science. Of course, a data scientist should know all these things, but as you can imagine, it's very difficult. And the people who can claim to be data scientists are those people who not only knows how to, to treat data, knows how, which tool to borrow for computer science and artificial intelligence. But as you can guess, the name science, science means we have this data, which reliable conclusion we can get from this data. So I want to get, I, every time I do my, some of my uh, my talk, this is my first slide, always. So here, I, I start going through some of the example and subfield of artificial intelligence where we can start getting some knowledge and how we can get data. For example, here we have planning and perception. And one of the, the good things we are good at now is computer vision. So this is a static picture of a, of a face Static because it doesn't change. We have a pictures, and then we can apply some algorithm to learn free features from this. And this is an image. Data is not only numerical data. It can be images, can be audio, numerical arrays. And then we have on the right side something that is more dynamic. So a visual representation that, that, that is wrong with a camera that continuously collects frames, images, and apply some algorithm, live runtime, to extract the information, okay? So as you can see on the right side, we can use computer vision for security purposes, for intelligent purposes. But once we start doing all these things, there is a new 
layer of ethical consideration that we must take account. So for example, what should be the policy on using open data for training imaging recognition algorithms? Well, this is, I think, the, my whole slide, <laughs> but that should be modeled, okay? It's impossible for us to continuously watch, for example, there on the bridge, people moving. So we have an algorithm that take all this data and process this data. So the first question here, should we trust that algorithm? Should we trust that inferential model? And also, how to supervise face recognition when we play with security or for intelligent purposes? All these questions are not trivial questions. <coughs> Self-driving cars, there. As, as, as my colleague showed before, we can have a, a whole array of sensors just in the car. And you can imagine how the stream of data where we collect every second. So processing this is not a trivial task. And also, we take pictures not only from sensor in the car, but the camera points in, inside the car and outside the car. So as soon as we, we get picture of the environments, we also take pictures of, of people. So as you can imagine, we have a problem there, which is privacy, the number of, of the cars. You see, so how could the data protection, the privacy framework for automated decision be applied to autonomous machine? Should the data protection and privacy community translate this legal framework into a machine readable law? Because the, mach the machine, the car, is going to take a decision. And above all, who is controlling all these things? Who, who is the data controller of data and decision taken from machine and from cars with self-learning capabilities? How to regulate self-driving cars and all the geolocation data that they generate at runtime? And above all, how they're going to impact the fundamental rights of people. This is an example of planning a perception. Perception because the car takes data from the environment on the timeline continuously, perceive, and then it needs to take decision, it needs to plan a decision, it needs to plan a route to take, and this must be done live at the run time, because if we have an obstacle or something that is going on in the street, we need to have a, a planning strategy. Let's see another example. Natural language processing. For example, machine translation. We want to translate something from one language to another. We go to, in Google Translate, we put a sentence in Italian and a translate in Irish. The algorithm Google and other institutions use for this is not a simple argument, arg algorithm. So when we start translating things from one language to another, I, I put an example there. When we translate something into another language, how do we know that the outcome in the second language, in the target language, is actually semantically correct and correspond to the semantics we wanted to communicate with the first language. So here there is some raising questions. How can we measure the impact of the newly translated text on people and society? If the text is translated in the wrong way, you can imagine the consequences. And if these things are done by journalists and media and social media, you can multiply these things on, on, on a larger scale. And above all, when we translate, I was talking with Dara uh, with this morning, there is an, a whole processing pipeline to move from one representation to another. And even if we anonymize data at the first stage, 
during this process, we can introduce some sensitive data. So how can we maintain anonymization across all the stages of processing data? And then we have all these important problems nowadays of fake news. The, the information we read every day, actually I have a question for you. How many of you think that information we read every day is correct information, is reliable information? Can you raise your hands up? Who believe we read just reliable information? Nobody. So there is an abundance of fake news. So how can we spot synthetic natural language information? How can we spot synthetically generated artificial information? This information can be in the form of text. It can be in the form of images. There, are, there is a, a new branch of artificial intelligence within machine learning that deals with the creation of algorithms to generate synthetic data. And if you go online, you tap fake pictures and in the original picture, you can see they're almost the same, but they have been created by algorithms. Machine learning. As you can see from, as you can guess from those two words, the key word there is learning. Learning from data in an automated way. That picture is a, is a picture of a neural network. Precisely, is a picture of a convolutional neural network. Convolutional neural networks take input images, apply a concept of a notion of convolution, which is dimensionality reduction, extract, learn some features, for example, that is a bird, and you can recognize the color, the shape, the face, extract automatic features, and these can be used for predictive purposes. For example, in this case, we want to predict which type of bird is in the picture. And this is done automatically. But most of the time, when we learn models from data, we learn very complex models with millions of parameters. As you can guess, now we have another problem. How can we interpret this complex model? And above all, how can we explain this model to known expert? So how to deal with the transparency of algorithms? Transparency of algorithms. And how to deal with the transparency of the resulting models? How to optimize the production of sensitive, discriminatory, personal information from obtuse data? And then we have the problem of bias. The algorithms that we use for creating predictive models always say, hey, this picture belongs to a man, 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 never a woman. So there is a bias there. There is a discrimination. How we avoid this? That's another important question. As I said, machine learning is, is very popular now. But it extracts models that are very complex to interpret and explain. And we, as humans, we don't understand those models. We understand just simple model. So how are we willing to sacrifice the accuracy of the models we learn apply machine learning for the transparency? And then if we trust algorithms to make decisions, self-driving cars, who will have the final word? The car, the machine, or the human? And then we have the last subfield of artificial intelligence, which is knowledge representation and automated reasoning. Probably most of you 
knows how to represent information with data, numbers. That's the most common form of knowledge representation. But we have a list of ways we can represent data. Images, sounds, noise, graph, rules, hierarchies, taxonomies, ontologies. This is a graph, a knowledge graph, where each node can be can be seen as a, a piece of information. We, we can encode this as a, as a rule, or we can encode this as a, as a sentence. And then the relationship, the arrows between nodes, represent some form of relationship between our nodes, our pieces of information. And let's see, we are in a hospital, and there is, there is the, the clinicians who is dealing with a patient with uh, breast cancer. She or he gets a lot of data, screen the patients, and she needs to communicate to the patient whether the patient has a higher risk of recurrency of the cancer, for example, after surgery. So she needs to take a decision. I'm going to perform chemotherapy, or I'm going to do a surgery. As you can imagine here, that's not a simple decision. Oh, I can perform a surgery because the high, the, the, we have higher chance of removing the tumor, the cancer. But the patient is eight years old. So if you perform a, a surgery on, on such a patient, well, he can die. Or chemotherapy. I can perform chemotherapy, but you can imagine the consequences for, for the human body, loss of hair, depression, and all these things. So these decisions there are not easy. So if we let the algorithm take this decision, and we don't have any control on that decision, well, you can imagine the consequences. So how to manage the uncertainty in data and in this type of inferences. How to deal with conflict, conflictual information? How to solve the conflicts between those pieces of arguments and produce a rational outcome? Should we trust again an automated decision? And how? And again, what is the impact of all these things on human? So just to wrap up this, I put these slides because uh, you know, Dara asked me to give some practical hint to organization dealing with data. So the first things we should do, we should focus on is reducing the biases and minimizing the discrimination of our prediction, of our decision, of our inferences. Because this is a fundamental human right. We don't want to discriminate people, things, anything. We need to be fair. There is a fairness principle, which again is connected to the fundamental human rights, but also to the, the privacy of personal data. We need to be fair. We need to manage data. We need to preserve privacy and anonymity at all stages of data processing. And also, we should have a continu continuous attention across all the stages of data processing, not at just the beginning. Because as I said, you might anonymize data at the beginning, and then there is a whole processing pipeline afterwards. What if the resulting data after pro processing is not anonymous anymore? We need to create systems, we need to create models, algorithms that are transparent, because we need to empower human. Because you can imagine the effect and the consequences of, uh, of uh, automatic, automated algorithms on, on, on society and humans. We need to design things in an ethical way always thinking about privacy of people. 
the, the effect and consequences of people in society. And then we are, all, we are all doing all these things for one important point. We need to empower humans. We need to enable us to develop, to augment our intelligence, not to replace our intelligence. So every solution we, we will design is to empower us and also maintaining the freedom of expression of people, the human rights. So all these things are my, 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 my final thought for, for all the people working with data in organization and for your future jobs. Thank you very much.